I'd like to call on our next speaker in the person of Mr. Masimba Musuza. The huge contribution made by migrant workers in Yasalan and Zimbabwe. Can you please give him a round of applause? I just want to say, after what's been said by um, the ladies, they are talking about feeling excluded, about men being old. Um, through the time, uh, from the time that the Malawians and the Zambians and the Moses people started coming into Zimbabwe. My own research, however, paints a picture of cultural exchange. When these people came to Zimbabwe, um, uh, I, I don't have any Malawian connections or Zambian connections myself. But I just want to say that for me, I just feel that all, all the people that are found in Zimbabwe, as far as I'm concerned, are Zimbabweans. There is no distinction between a Zimbabwean who's Great, great, great grandfathers lived in Zimbabwe, and someone whose grandfather came from Malawi or Australia or India or wherever. That's that's my personal view. That's how we were brought up, and that's how we all think. Are you ready to talk about it? So as you will see, just from a few examples of how Zimbabwe, uh, people from Malawi and Zambia made. I don't know if you can see that from the area. But uh, can, you, can you roll the first slide, please? The next slide. Urbanization. When the Zambians and the Malawians came in, they didn't have what we call Kumbusha or Empire in Zimbabwe. They didn't have a traditional homestead where most um, Zimbabwean workers would go to when they were not working in the towns or in the mines. So they were the first truly urbanized Africans in the history of Zimbabwe, or Southern Africa, as it was called then. Uh, <coughs> Shona speakers, are they, how many Shona speakers are there? Are you familiar with the term Pakasekera, meaning city authorities? Do you know where the name where it came from? This was Shona speakers. Um, they, they would hear it from the Malawians, meaning, um, you know, to lock up, because the, while the time that they would see the civic authorities was when they came to lock you out of the way you were staying if you weren't paying the rent. And that's how the word came into Shona. Uh, here are another side, please. Alright, oh, yeah, that's another uh, urban settlement. The areas of Nagai, Vakos, and all these are full of. Malawi people. And because a lot of Zimbabweans, when they stayed in towns, they were really free really of going to retire in the countryside. But what a lot of the Malawians did was, as we heard, they weren't entitled to land in the traditional areas because they didn't have uh, traditional ties. So they would buy homes in town. And for a lot of people, that just seemed strange. You would hear, my, my grandfather's generation, why would I buy a house in town for? I'm not an Malawi. The feeling was that it was a part of the Malawian or the Zambian culture. Next slide, please. There's a very popular children's game. Ah, Mila, Amina Gadea, Simona, Rea. Does anyone know what that means? Does anyone know what that means? Does anyone know what that means? Because we, we all try to do this. But apparently, that too is coming from the Malawian community. I'm not sure which language it is. Can anyone tell me? It's obviously been distorted. Like, you know, I mean, what, 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 what is that about? You know, I mean, what, 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 what is that about? It wasn't the proper language. But, but, but it is from the Malawian, isn't it? Yeah, see? So that's another. It's a, it's, a, it's, play, it's, a, it's a children's game all over the country. That is a gift from the Malawans. Thank you very much for that one. Uh, next slide. Nyanja or Chewa. This is now Zimbabwe's third widely sp most widely spoken language. Which again, it's a, it's a gift from the people of Malawi. 
Um, next slide, please. There's an interesting fact about the Nyanja language. It is one of the 55 which was chosen for the recording which was put on the Voyager. And for those who don't know, the Voyager is an unmanned space vehicle which was sent out in the, into space in the hope that if there's any intelligent life out there and they find it, they will be able to get a message from Earth. And one of the messages is read in, um, in Nyanja or Chewa. So, any Chewa speakers out there, if there's any aliens that are, come, that are gonna visit us, chances are they will speak Chewa. Uh, next slide, please. Oh yes, this is what, well, it's a very uh, common feature in the urban areas, the Nyao dancers, the, um, what is it, Shiguri. Chikule Chao You know, it's, 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 it's again, it's from Malawi, but it's now part of Zimbabwean traditional dance. It's, you know, kids learn it in school. So this shows, again, that we have assimilated culture from Zambia and Malawi. Next slide, Steve. I'm just rushing through. In what order? This is the wrong order. This was going to be the last one because, again, it's controversial in that it means a lot of different things to different people. But if I was asked to summarize what Chinamali is, I would say that is finishing school. Um, they don't have it here in England anymore. But before, young girls would be taught things, you know, like um, manners and stuff. Why would they be taught these things? Because before, a lot of the education was home-based. But when, when children grew up, they were expected to, to then learn how to behave in public, how to behave in the wider world. And that is what Chinawali was actually about. What is particular about the Malawan version is that we've tended to exoticize it. You know, there's a lot of stuff you will read, sensational stuff. I cannot confirm whether it's true or not, because again, each school um, they tend to keep, these are considered sacred things, so the initiates are uh, instructed not to tell. So I, whatever you've heard, I cannot say whether it's true or not. Only people who've actually participated will be able to tell you that. Sorry, but it's something that we all tend to think of as being part of the Malawan culture. Yet the reality is, in any community in Zimbabwe, where they do have a coming of age ritual, where young men and women are taught uh, the norms, conventions of that particular community, that too is also Chinawali. I don't know if that is actually like a, a Shona word, but I've seen it in the Shona dictionary. So it could have come from the Malawians, or it could be one that we had anyway, because the languages tend to be similar. Uh, next slide, please. Oh yes, this was meant to tie in with the Chewa and the Nyanja. For most, most Zimbabweans are Christian, but there is a large number, something like 25%, well, some count, who are Muslim. And a lot of, because a lot of these were Chewa speakers, in Shona today, the modern, the, the word for Muslim is Muchawa, which is derived from, from Chewa. So there tends to be a bit of confusion of the two. There are a lot of people who are Christian, but because they carry Islamic names, because again of the Chewa heritage. So this is again something that they brought, that religious diversity into Zimbabwe's predominantly um, Christian scape. Speaking of Christianity, the Malawians also brought us the CCAP church which is very famous for its hymn singing. Uh, I'm not going to sing any of the hymns because I'm not very good at singing. But that too is another addition to the Zimbabwean culture that um, the Malawans and the Zambians brought. But as you can see, just from those few examples that you know, we're dealing with the people, yes, there was, I'm not going to take I'm not going to take anything away from the stories that you've heard of alienation, of pain and stuff, but my little presentation just illustrates that while that was happening, there was too a lot of, um, how can we, of assimilation of their culture. 
And that's why we've reached this stage where a lot of us are really quite comfortable with the idea that Malawians and Zambians are also Zimbabweans. So thank you very much. It's not my culture that you made rich, it's our culture. That's how I look at it. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause to Mr. And you were setting us to the huge contributions made by migrant workers in Yasaland in Zimbabwe. Thank you so much.